Okay, so um, I had to take a quick break. I realized I had the wrong data set in here. So now you can notice that our first um, row has all of our headers or our variable names, which is what we want. Um, so let's go ahead and look at some of this data. This is in the data source view. Um, some of these variables we're going to want to change um, from a numeric to a string variable. So gender is already string. But what we also want to do is, you know, when we get into viewing this data in a scatter plot, we want to be able to understand not just what one and two are and how they're compared, but what one and two are standing for. So in this case, one is male and two is female. And these aliases are essentially like values or labels um, that will appear on our data set. So now you can see they appear this way. Um, and the other one that we want to do this to is ethnicity. Um, and it's numeric right now, so we want to change it to string. And then we're also going to give it some aliases. So let's do white or Caucasian, black or African American, and Hispanic. So those are all correct now. Um, so we've added the aliases. We've changed some of the variables to string variables. Um, which allows us to have, you know, string variables can be not just uh, in number, but categorical. Um, they can contain letters, numbers, and other characters, which are important for us um, so that we can really compare groups. So um, the next thing we want to do is we want to go to our sheet, and we can see it kind of auto-imported dimensions and measures for us. So a dimension is um, fields that contain discrete categorical information, um, in this case, they're automatically assigned a dimension when they're imported because they look like something that's a dimension. Um, they're already string variables, and that's what indicates that. And then measures, um, they're automatically saved as quantitative. Um, numerical information is given for those measures, which is why they're down here. Um, and they're automatically continuous when you drag them to a row or column. So we'll have to kind of adjust for that as we go. Um, so, with that said, some of these can change, you know, where they're at, and that's okay. So, you know, for example, gender is a dimension because we, we changed that to a string variable and we changed it to male and female, um, as you can see. So, we'll go ahead and add some other dimensions up there, like we'll add ethnicity. We'll make sure that it's where it needs to go and everything looks good. Um, we can add work team up here. Age, I think we can technically leave since it's um, continuous. Um, so we'll leave the rest for now and we'll, we'll see where we get. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that, um, I'm not sure why I see it up up here. I think I double clicked it on accident. That's my bad. So um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to um, set up our scatter plot. So I'll go ahead and show you what the scatter plot will, you know, how we can basically do that now before we get into um, how to create the z-scores that we were talking about needing to do. So um, in this case, our uh, outcome variable is skill score. And so that will be in our column. So column is always our outcome, row is always our predictor variable. So um, skill competency score will go in our outcome columns. And hours training will go in our rows. And if you notice, it doesn't really give us any scatter plot. There's like one point. So let's go ahead and change this to dimension. We'll change this to dimension. And now we get our not so pretty scatter plot. Um, Thank goodness for data that isn't as meaningful as you want. Um, but it gets the job done for this class. So that's just to give you a basic idea of how we would do this um, initially. Now, of course, we don't want this to um, be our graph because we want to calculate some z-scores for these. Um, and in order for us to do that, I'm actually going to pull up some syntax that I found. And I'll, I'll walk you through why we why we'll use these scores and, and why this formula works um, as we go. Okay, so z-scores are standardized scores. They help us compare against other samples. Um, 
they tell us what falls below specific values or what might be an exceptional score, like a top performer. Um, they help us see how distributions might be relative to one another. So that might be why we um, want to use it here. There's a couple of different methods that um, I came across online to um, look at Z scores in Tableau. Um, essentially, the, the one that I landed on that seems to work well for this analysis is um, this fixed LOD or level of detail method. Um, and essentially the level of detail in Tableau um, allows the z-score to create a table. Um, but in order to use the table, you have to fix the values, um, which helps control for uh, control helps with control or flexibility for those outliers. Um, and so if you notice in the syntax I'm about to show you, there's some fixed variable or fixed terms. Um, and I went ahead and put these in a notepad just so you can kind of see um, what we're working with before we put them in there. Ignore this down here. Um, so it's, it's syntax similar to what we use in R. Fi we're using fixed. So fixed hours training. So this is for our hours training fixed C store. Fixed hours training is relative to the sum of the skill competency score minus the fixed average of hours training to the sum of the skill competency score um, divided by this this fixed standard deviation of hours training and the sum of uh, the skill competency score. And this is essentially the same thing for skill competency scores Z score, except that we've we've kind of swapped out the the variable of interest. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this syntax in for hours training VIX C score and how we're going to um, use this is we're going to go to analysis and um, come down here to create calculated field. So we're going to go ahead and say Z score for hours training. And then this is essentially like a syntax window. We can go ahead and paste this. If you notice, um, it identifies the, the sum expression. It identifies the variable we're using. It identifies this command as fixed and standard deviation. Um, so we don't have any errors, which is wonderful. So we're gonna hit, hit okay. And if you notice, we've created this new variable down here, z-score Z hours training. So then we're gonna go up and do it one more time for our um, outcome variable, create calculated field, z-score, make sure they match. Um, so we'll do our z-score for our skill score. And we'll go back to this notepad and I just saved myself a little bit of time by going ahead and copying it into a notepad so that I um, didn't have to type all that out because I don't think that's something that you want to watch me do. Um, but essentially it's the same thing. It's this skill competency score and hours training minus the average over the standard deviation. We'll go ahead and hit OK. So now you notice we have two Z scores. So now that we have those Z scores, um, we want to go ahead and um, pull those in just like we had before um, to the correct, you know, column and row. So again, we want our column, our outcome variable to be our skill score. We want our row, our predictor variable to be our hours training. If you notice, nothing's really showing up. It's probably because this is as a measure instead of as a dimension. This is a measure instead of as a dimension. This is just, I think that it has to be discrete as well. Okay, so we went ahead and named these skill score Z and hours training Z just so they're a little easier to um, identify. And um, if you notice, they are dimension and continuous level. They both are. Um, and that's how we get this scatter plot with um, the Z scores. So um, at this point, 
we're going to go ahead and check and make sure that our other variables are in their correct form. So we'll go over here to, excuse me, to sheet one, and we'll look at age, make sure that it's what it needs to be, it is. So let's go ahead and start adding some things. Um, so we can start with age actually. It varies by size, so we can drag it over here by size. Um, and if you notice, we've got a key over here that as the older you get, the larger the circle gets. That's correct. Let's go ahead and double check that this is dimension and discrete. That's correct. Then we can go ahead and do our two uh, level variable, which is gender. That's going to correspond to color. If you notice here, we have female and male. Um, so then females are blue and male are yellow. Make sure that these are dimension and discrete as well. Then we'll go to our three level variable, which is supposed to be um, varying by column, it's ethnicity. So we'll go ahead and put that up in the columns. And if you notice, it's divided ethnicity into one, two, and three. Um, and for some reason that's no longer showing its alias. So let's go ahead and recorrect that while we're here. Well, it's there. It's odd. Let's start from scratch just to make sure. string variables. <laughs> Let's go back. Okay, so I got the aliases fixed on ethnicity and they show up here, black, Hispanic, and white. Um, so from there, we'll go ahead and um, work on getting gender on there again, since I took everything off to kind of fix things. So gender, we'll do color, male and female. As you can see, it shows up here. We did age already, let's go ahead and do it again. Um, age is based on size, so we see the key here. As you get older, the key gets larger. And then we'll do um, work team, which is work teams one, two, three, and four. And they are based on shape. So you can see the key here. Work team one gets circles, work team two gets squares. Um, and so it looks like now we have the majority of what we need, except that um, we need to add some trend lines to the requested variables. So we'll go ahead and add some trend lines and how we do that. So we click on this analytics tab. Um, from there we'll go ahead and hit trend line. We'll drag it up here. If you see we want linear. Um, so we did that for gender because that's the first one that we wanted to do it to. Um, and then the second variable that we want to um, add trend lines for is, um, let me see, let me make sure I'm getting it right. We want a trend line for and our second one will be ethnicity. So we'll go ahead and select ethnicity, go to analytics, Click trend line, drag it over linearly. And you can see here, let's see. So from there, we will um, go ahead and use the raw scores 
for um, predicting these outcomes. So let's come down here. Um, we're moving those to detail. So we'll move the skill score to detail. We'll move the hours trained to detail. And that's going to help us in just a moment with this tool tip. And so we get, oh wait, I accidentally grabbed the z-score. So let's grab the skill score. Okay. So now when we come into um, this tool tip, you can see I've got this already typed up, but it's not correct. So we'll delete it. And I did save this under a text file. Let me grab it. So we could easily put it in there. So it's going to give you, um, it's going to give you these terms in arrows and you can go ahead and delete them, but essentially you make this into a sentence so it'll have like age, ethnicity, gender, work team, all listed out here. And that will insert the correct thing for the right data point. And so I just went ahead and made sure this made sense. So a blank year old, so it's, you know, from a work team number completed blank and had a resulting competency score of this. And I went ahead and centered this, uh, made it nice and pretty. So if I, if I hit okay on that, then I can click on any one of these data points and it'll tell me a 36 year old I don't know why it says 2 I must have a typo in there, let me fix that really quick I don't know a 36 year old female work team from work team number 4 completed 22 and had a resulting skill score of 2 so let's look one more time so let's add training hours don't want this. So let's hit OK and see what we get now. A 40 year old female from work team number four completed 14 hours and her resulting skill competency score of 223. That sounds pretty good. So that helps us kind of, you know, if you were to show this to a client, um, you could, you know, hover over these different ones and compare them as needed. Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, you do this assignment.